everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be doing a full review and a 12 hour wear test, including a daylight check-in on the new Kosas Revealer Skin Improving Foundation. This has an SPF of 25. It retails for $42. It has 36 shades. I was so excited about this foundation because I personally love the Kosas Revealer Concealer. It's been one of my favorites. It's a nice medium coverage, very hydrating, looks really beautiful, lasts a really long time. So when I saw that they were launching a new foundation, of course I was jumping all over it. I'm excited about it so let's go ahead and jump into the details on it it is a clean skin improving medium coverage SPF 25 foundation and treatment with hyaluronic acid niacinamide peptides squalane vitamin b5 arnica and caffeine it is described as a medium coverage with a natural finish skin reviving SPF treatment foundation instantly blends like a second skin with a natural dreamy finish to blur visibly smooth texture and minimize pores the powerhouse blends of actives is clinically proven to hydrate brighten soothe plump and protect over time it is claiming to be long wearing and silicone free that is all of the deets on it you guys I actually purchased the shade medium warm 240 and I also purchased the shade medium tan neutral olive 260 so I will be swatching both of these shades next to other shades that I have in my collection that might be similar but for reviewing purposes I am wearing medium warm 240 so before we jump into the application of this foundation up here on the screen is an image of my age and my skin concerns what I like and what I dislike in foundation I always feel like it's important for the audience to know what the person behind the camera likes and dislikes in foundation Makeup is so subjective, especially when it comes to complexion products. So I always feel it's very important for you guys to know what I like and what I look for when I'm reviewing new foundations and concealers. And I will also list that information in the description box down below, along with popular foundations out on the market and what shades I wear in those foundations so that you guys can get an idea of my complexion. So that's all the deets on this, you guys. Let's go ahead and jump into the application and then we will get into a six hour daylight check-in where I take you guys outside, zoom you guys in real close, show you guys how it's looking six hours in, and then of course we will get into the swatches and I will swatch these two foundation shades next to other foundations that I have in my collection. Then I will come back and do a 12 hour check-in and in that 12 hour check-in, I will share all of my thoughts on it and my experience over the last couple of days that I've been wearing it. So. Let's get into the applications and I will see you guys all in my final thoughts. Okay, so let's jump into this new foundation from Kosas. I'm so excited to try this out. I do have an issue right here going on, so I'm excited to see how this covers because it is claiming to be a medium coverage. So I have them swatched here on the back of my hand and I'll also swatch them on my face so you guys can see them. So we have Medium Warm 240 and this is Medium Tan Neutral Olive 260, I believe. Yeah, 260. So... This is medium warm, 240. And that blends in good. I don't have any fake tan on my face. I only have it on my body. So I think the medium warm works pretty well for my face. Yeah. And then the neutral olive. That's it, it's so ugly. You know, it's hard to say. There's not a big difference between these two on my face, but I think I'm gonna go with the Medium Warm 240. I've already prepped my skin. I have applied my Charlotte Tilbury Magic Cream, which is typically uh, the cream that I wear underneath the foundation. I'm just gonna kind of blend out what I have on my face. I'm gonna apply one side of the face with a brush and then press it into the skin with a sponge. And then I'll do the other side with the sponge only. So I'm applying the Medium Warm 240. Okay. 
Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and press it into the skin with a sponge. Is a medium coverage I mean it has covered up that nasty little crater I got going on there this is a thicker foundation so I feel like a brush would apply this better overall than a sponge but for the sake of the video I will apply the other side with a sponge You know what um the sponge applied this great so either way whether you prefer a sponge or a brush to apply this foundation either way works great because I feel like I got the same amount of coverage using the sponge only as I did with the brush on the other side so I went ahead and applied the foundation and this is really pretty so far I have high hopes for this one it is reminding me of the first impression that I had of the Beauty Blender Skin Tint, which has become my absolute favorite foundation. As far as the overall application, the great coverage, I don't feel like it's weighing heavy on my wrinkles or my texture or anything like that. This is the first time I've applied it, so we'll see how it goes, but I will continue to wear this for the next couple of days, but just based on applying it, I'm loving it. Okay, so I wanted to pop back on camera. It's been several days since I first applied this foundation, but I wanted to pop on camera and do an application for my wear test day. So right now it is 10, 18 in the morning. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply the foundation like I have been for the last few days, and then we will continue to do the wear test today. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply the Medium Warm 240, and I'm gonna use my BK Beauty uh, 101 brush. And I like to just kind of stipple and buff this in with the brush. I would say my best application with this foundation is with a clean brush, which don't get me wrong, most of the time clean brushes do apply the best. But this foundation, because of the way it spreads, it's like I almost don't need to like press it into the skin with a sponge if I apply it with a clean brush, so it works good. I also feel like when I use a clean brush, I don't apply as much. It just like buffs into the skin and I don't have to use very much. And I feel like I get a better wear if I'm not using too much of this. For me, a clean brush is like the best way to apply this foundation. It just truly, like melts into the skin and you don't need the sponge to push it in. It just kind of, oh, it looks really beautiful. It looks very skin-like. And the less you use of this foundation, the longer it's gonna last. I've noticed that I wouldn't say that this is a super long wearing foundation, at least that's not been my experience, but I've noticed that I get the best wear time, the longest wear time, when I apply a very thin, even layer with a clean brush. This finish right now reminds me of this Chanel number one foundation. That's the vibes that this foundation gives me. It's just the, by the way that it kind of smooths out the skin and the way that it looks so skin-like when you apply it. I wouldn't say that they wear the same, but they definitely apply very similar. And it, you think it's gonna be dewy, but it's not. It's not a super dewy foundation. Not hydrating, but it's not matte. It's kind of just like a satin, natural type of finish. I'm gonna go ahead and go off camera, finish the rest of my makeup, and then we will do a six hour daylight check-in and of course a 12 hour check-in later on this evening. So I will see you guys in my next check-ins. Okay, you guys, let's jump into my midday check-in. You'll be happy to know, look at my sweet dog. You'll be happy to know that my Christmas trees are gone. The last time I did a concealer and foundation test, I had my <laughs> Christmas tree up, it was so embarrassing. Okay, 
so it is currently almost six o'clock you guys I was like oh my gosh I'm gonna lose daylight if I don't get outside so I was in the middle of filming and just the time went by so this foundation has been on for what like 70 hours now it is so noisy out here tonight you guys I'm so sorry I think it's because it, you know everybody's coming home from work so the traffic is just bizarre so I apologize for the outside noise but you know I was just looking at this foundation in the mirror before I came out and it's look it's still looking really really good let's zoom in on the textured area which is this area right here which is the way I test foundation if a foundation looks bad in this area it's not gonna look good anywhere else so let's zoom in and show you guys what it looks like so as you can see it looks really good it looks good on my texture like all along here on kind of that orange pill area it looks really good it doesn't look too heavy I still have maintained some of the coverage around my nose it's not breaking apart here it looks really good along this area it's looking really really good right and I like it on the forehead it looks like I've lost a little bit of coverage but you see how I have all those ridges I have like a ridgy bone structure I don't know why but you can see I have a bone here bone here bone here <laughs> bone hair bone hair like and it really pops out when I'm outside but I think this foundation looks really really good let's zoom into like the nose area I think it looks really good like especially like right through here I am really impressed with it and I have a zit healing here and here and it looks good over those too doesn't it so that's it for this quick little daylight check-in. Uh, the next time you guys will see me, it will be my 12-hour check-in, which I will zoom you guys in, show you guys real close, and then I will get into my final thoughts. So I will see you guys then. Okay, everyone, I am back to give my final thoughts on this new foundation from Kosas. Right now, it is 10.44 at night, so I've officially had it on for just over 12 hours. I'm going to take the camera off of the tripod. I'm going to pull you guys in super, super close so that you guys can see how this is wearing. I mean, the beauty lights and everything just make it looks so much better so in order to be fully transparent i've been recently taking the camera off the tripod zooming you in so you can really see it up close so. i'm just going to go ahead and hold the camera hopefully it's not too jiggly now you can see it's a little bit makeup -y around here right like you can see it's starting to kind of separate and pull apart here on the chin and then it's a little bit makeup -y here on the texture and a little bit makeup -y around here right little focus there we go you can kind of see it kind of sitting there and I used a very small amount you can see it's you know started to pull away from my nose which is so normal after wearing it for 12 hours I mean come on the only powder I put on is I put a little bit of Charlotte Tilbury powder right here uh, so I didn't powder the forehead at all and you can see I'm pretty shiny so I'm gonna go ahead and put the camera back on the tripod and I will jump into my final okay. thoughts. Let me let me just break it down. I really like this foundation. I feel like I need a little bit different of a shade. I feel like this washes me out just a little bit more than I prefer. So I might buy a darker shade. I feel like this foundation is best for like an everyday wear. It does start to kind of get a little bit, um, you know, I've worn it with powder. And when I wear it with powder, the powder doesn't seem to control it. And I don't apply a lot of powder. I don't 
feel like powder makes much of a difference when it comes to the wear time. So for me, this is a foundation that I would wear when I am maybe just running errands and I need my foundation to last maybe five, six, seven hours and I'm good. It is a really beautiful, natural looking foundation and it can get a little bit makeup-y by the end of the night, but when I did my midday check-in, it wasn't super makeup-y. It seems like that starts happening like right after the eight, nine, 10 hour mark. And so this is just not a foundation that is super dependable when it comes to being a long wearing foundation, but it is a nice coverage. It does look like your skin. So I love the way that the skin looks. I love the way it kind of melts into the skin and kind of becomes the skin and it looks really healthy. It's got great ingredients, but it's just not one that I would reach for if you need something long wearing. And I also would not reach for this if you need to wear a mask. Like if you're putting a mask on and off, I would not wear this. This is not the one I would choose. There's a lot of great foundations out on the market for masks. This is just not one of them. But all in all, it is a nice foundation. On a scale from one to five, I'm giving it a four and a half. And the, you know, the, the half a point is just that it doesn't last longer than like eight to 10 hours but that's not really that big of a deal. This is a beautiful foundation, it really is. A lot of people don't wear their foundations for longer than eight hours. I've actually been criticized for doing 12 hour wear tests because people have been like, well, who wears their foundation for 12 hours or longer? I actually know a lot of people that wear their foundations for 12 hours or longer. Uh, a lot of people have 12 hour shifts and they need it to last. There are a lot of people that need a 12 hour wear and this isn't going to be one of those. But if you don't need a 12 hour wear and you want something that's more natural and looks really beautiful, I think this is a nice option. This might be a clinger on really dry. So like if you have dry patches, this might cling to dry patches because it's not dewy and it's not super hydrating, right? So this might cling to dry patches. So kind of keep your eye on that. I feel like this is perfect for dry normal, normal, uh, combo, and possibly oily skin. The reason why I say that is because I use the Hourglass Translucent Setting Powder. That's not really a powder that's like a lock and load oil control powder. That's just something that just kind of adds a little bit of powder to kind of calm down the shine, but it's not going to control oil. If you apply a really good primer that controls your oils and kind of blocks those oils from breaking through and you use a really good powder, I think you could wear this. I really do. I think this might be oily skin friendly. I think it's a gorgeous foundation. It's just, just don't expect it to last more than like 10 hours. I think 10 hours is about the, I think 10 hours is about the time it starts to break away but it's beautiful. I, I really love it. I mentioned in the application that these two are similar, this Chanel number one, but the Chanel number one lasts longer. This looks flipping freaking amazing at 12 hours. Amazing. There is a big price difference in here, okay? That at the end of the day, it is what it is. So those are my overall thoughts on this new foundation. Sound up down below in the comment section. How many of you guys have picked up this foundation and what are your thoughts? I'm so curious to hear. I haven't watched any reviews. I don't know how anybody is feeling about this. I really try not to watch other videos and reviews on products that I'm reviewing or going to review because it kind of does taint my opinion. So I try to just tune it out, even though sometimes I'm so curious. So I'm really curious to hear your guys' thoughts. If you've bought this foundation, share with us in the comment section down below your skin type and if you love it or if you don't. So, so curious. So share with us in the comment section. Thank you so much for hanging out with me in today's video. I hope you guys all have a wonderful day and I will see you guys all in my next video. Love you. Bye.